So I think it's time to start, if you don't mind. On behalf of the organizing committee, as chair of the committee, I'm addressing you with greetings. So welcome on board, and we are all set to hear what awaits us in the future. Our students will devise a guide for us today, which will probably be one of the most essential and one of the most valuable tools for us to be guided by, if I can put it that way. So uh, I suggest we start with a video greeting from the Vice Director of the Academy and our Director, Sergei Misayedov, that he sent us. So we're all ears, uh, after which we start our work, if you don't mind. Following my introductory speech or several sentences of introduction, my dear friends, I want to stress some pretty important issues connected with our today's conference. First of all, the conference is organized by IBS Moscow of Renipa Department of English Language. Today, English language is a universal language of world communication, like Latin in the past, during the time of Roman Empire. The empire disappeared, another language came, and so maybe in some years we'll be speaking different languages. Now we communicate in English. And so it's an opportunity for all the students to practice their English speaking, arguing, listening, understanding, etc. But this is not the only, and maybe even not the major goal of this conference. We created this conference, we developed the concept of this conference with a special meaning. We want the young people, why the young? Because future belongs to you, not to men, to the people of our generation. Our time limit is pretty short. Future belongs to you and we want you to think about the most serious global problems and conflicts of the present time. We want to provide for you an opportunity to discuss how to make our planet better, how to make our future happier for the majority of the people of this planet. We want you to find solutions why for decades the leading countries of the world are speaking about the pole of poverty and the pole of wealth, but the quantity of wealth in the limited group of countries is only growing and the quantity of poor people is not decreasing, it is increasing constantly. How should we combine our efforts to make this world better, to make this world multipolar, with several centers of gravity where equal people, thinking people, the people who care about the future, they meet each other, they discuss, they prove each other about the solution of this or that problem, and then they take the hands of their friends and they move to the settlement of the problems. I do hope that through the discussion you would learn how to outline your opinion how to listen to the arguments of your opponents, how to find balanced, compromise type of solution so important for today's economic, social, geopolitical, and even cultural life. We want you to discuss, to network, and to learn in this process. We want you to think about the future of humanity. We want you, in some decades, to make our world much, much better. God bless you. I wish your conference a great success 
and I wish you and your families good luck and prosperity. Thank you very much. So we can start and the floor is yours, Alec. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's welcome to the practical part of this GAIDA conference 2023. My name is Oleg Wetzler, and together with Oleg Gashev, Oleg, raise your hand, please, we'll facilitate this session. Let and, us. Uh, sorry, sorry, Oleg, and um, I will uh, to share uh, about uh, Emil Matirosian, uh, who is a professor of. Uh, uh, I don't know exactly. Ranepa, Ranepa, Ranepa professor, professor, Ranepa teaching, professor. yes. And, uh, teaching, yes. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, uh, 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 this uh, program. Yeah, this is about soft skills, how people immediately get in, talk, in contact who never knew about each other, never dealt with each other, but then they will immediately demonstrate to you how well they are at establishing immediate instant links between each other and uh, um, investing into the common wealth. Okay, let's go on. So let me start with a, a short presentation. Is it visible? Yes. yes. Great. So uh, let's start uh, from the basic. I'm fighting with technology. So this is a view to the Shanghai Harbor, one of the biggest container ports uh, in the world. So uh, let's start from the basic. Here we could see the ideal chart of inventory replenishment. Accurate forecasting, regular ordering, and timely delivery allows to minimize safety or buffer stock, which secures us from the out of stock in case transport delays or demand growth. This is ideal picture. It's a famous so tooth diagram and three years ago the concept just in time was extremely popular as it gives opportunity to minimize cost as safety stock practically is a waste of money and resources due to storage cost and money frozen in inventory and uh, but real life is much more difficult and a lot of factors of volatility could affect replenishment process. Uh, as you could see here, the famous story of Evergreen in Suez, which actually suddenly make a huge effort to the whole replenishment uh, cycle to replenishment process across the globe. It's what your director recently told us. The world is small and we all depend. And the question is how to make it better and uh, how to, and the logistic is a part of the uh, processes which makes us closer, which makes us more cooperation, which helps to make more binders between the countries, between the companies. So here you could see that in a re real life, the delivery time could be affected and safety stock have to be increased, which of course affected the profit of the company which operates here. But it could be not only the time delay, it could also be the cost delay. Uh, for example, you can see here the price volatility on the container freight from China to Europe. And you could see that due to the different reasons, COVID, etc., the uh, cost of the delivery of cacao butter, and we are going closer to the topic of our uh, exercises when we'll talk about the chocolate, chocolate bars distribution and production. 
So you could see here that the impact uh, on the price could differ from 0.7% to nearly 4.5%. This shows how strong volatility in, uh, exists uh, in, uh, in pricing and in, in logistics. And logistic professionals should have mindset and creativity to solve such problem at necessary time and at reasonable cost. And let, now let's see what you teams have prepared based on your knowledge, ideas, and common sense. Please listen carefully each other to ask appropriate questions after group presentations. Each group will have 10 minutes for presentation. So group A, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we can start. Um, uh, first of all, I am um, and my team are very happy to be present uh, on this uh, session about logistics, and we will express our ideas how logistics have changed uh, in according with case of chocolate bar. Uh, so first of all, I would like to introduce the team. So my, my name is Elizaveta Petrova. Also my colleagues are Eva Yusifova, Vitalia Zemlianska and Selina Safina. So we will start with um, uh, the problem with deliver, delivery roads. So as you know, uh, due to the sanctions imposed in, on Russia in 2022, the import of goods in Russia was heavily complicated um, and bureaucratized. And uh, at the same time, the export of goods from Russia was uh, um, paralyzed for some time. And um, the most damaged uh, transportations were Eva and uh, Sea of Freight. And at the results of it, it's um, relocation and reorganization of the transportation of import and export um, in, favor, in favor of railways and uh, roads. Uh, and their, um, the time uh, of transportation and the cost of transportation also greatly increased. And uh, Nowadays, uh, retailers and logistics operators are looking for new delivery roads, and so uh, we will discuss some of them. First of all, it's air transportation. Uh, it was uh, really stopped for some time, and it's now possible only through the United Arab Emirates, uh, Serbia, Turkey, Bahrain, India, China, C, uh, CIS countries, except for Belar Belarus and uh, Moldova, and we will talk about it a little bit later. And um, so the transportation by air is uh, only allowed um, by airlines and aircrafts from uh, friendly countries, and we can't use uh, of can uh, can't use like the aircrafts from countries that are unfriendly. Um, and what about sea freight? Uh, there are no mirror restrictions for sea freight, uh, except for facilities in the Azov Sea. Um, Nevertheless, uh, imports are complicated uh, by the closure of the largest, uh, largest logistics hubs in Europe for goods going to Russia and by the refuse um, of container shipping operators to work with Russia due to the um, situation all we know. Uh, and it affects both the Western and Eastern Russian ports, uh, so geographical remoteness remoteness of the eastern ports uh, doesn't allow them uh, to be um, like them um, to transfer all the resources here because they're remoted from the center of Russia, Moscow and all the European part where like the major part of consumers live. Um, and um, 
what about their like um, north ports uh the climate uh here also doesn't allow the severe climate here also doesn't allow to transfer there all the transportations so uh i give my floor to my colleague eva yes now i would like to also mention uh, uh, roads and uh, automobile transportation because import by road is available um, along the southern border of the Russian Federation uh, through Georgia, Azerbaijan, uh, Kazakhstan, Mongolia and China. Also, it is still possible to get, for example, um, through uh, Baltic, uh, Baltic uh, border. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about concrete examples uh, that can be for our case of chocolate bars. But basically, uh, one of the most uh, challenging uh, questions is that uh, checkpoints on the borders are uh, are now have a very long queues uh, because of the sanctions that were imposed and if we're talking for example for China uh, we still have some COVID restrictions even from 2018 uh, that are still in practice today. So we need to also always be aware of the situation there. Uh, and in terms of Mongolia, uh, we do not have uh, a really good high quality logistics and infrastructure there. So it's also not a very good route to use for automobile transportation. And uh, for example, Kazakhstan might be also not the best uh, um route because government uh, is uh, afraid of uh, secondary sanctions that can be uh, applied to them if they allow for example russian uh, deliveries through european uh, from european countries to russian to russia because um uh, it's a good way to transport things to transfer them but they're afraid that uh, they can have these secondary sanctions uh, applied to them uh, talking about rail transport, uh, it's by far the least of affected by the sanctions. They are still possible, but it's possible mainly for industrial and industrial goods and not retail goods, which is not um, good for which is not uh, working for our case. Now, uh, going on on the second slide of our presentation, uh, we would like to show you just a concrete map of uh, Belarus and points that are available for crossing. Uh, we checked that um, cacao goods uh, that are our need for cacao production is basically come uh, from uh, Africa, Côte d'Ivoire, and uh, through some Germany and Austria and uh, Switzerland. And for example, if we're talking about European part uh, that needed to be transferred to European part also of Russia, we can use uh, Polish, uh, Poland, uh, Belarus uh, border, and mainly only one crossing point is working for now. Uh, and what is interesting that uh, transport can go there with um, either European or Belarus or Poland uh, plates, uh, and then they can change it for Belarusian Russian plates to go uh, change of tracts uh, to go to Russia. Now we will talk about uh, some recommendations and also other sanctions uh, that are for our sector, applied for our sector. So, so the COVID-19 uh, and the economic sanctions have presented significant uh, changes to the logistic of the chocolate industry. And uh, as you may be aware, the pandemic uh, period has disrupted global trade and uh, supply chains, like um, as we already listed, travel restriction, quarantine measures, and reduced um, workforce, uh, I think have affected the production and transportation of goods worldwide, including uh, the cacao beans uh, supply chain. So the restrictions and measures have um, also led to increased uh, shipping costs and delivery delays affecting the delivery of raw materials to manufacturers. And one of the key challenges um, 
that are facing the logistics of the chocolate industry due to the COVID-19 is the disruption of global transportation. As uh, with border closures and um, reduced uh, air travel, the movement of goods has been um, severely affected. And in addition, I could say that um, the um, pandemic has led to labor shortages and reduced productivity in the manufacturing sector too, uh, as factories have um, had to implement um, Mm, social distance measures and provide some protective equipment for their workers, uh, leading to reduced production capacity. So to provide a clear picture of the impact, let me provide you with some numbers. You can see them on the slides. So Ghana, which is one of the largest cacao producing countries globally, produced approximately 20% of the world's cacao, and the country experienced now a 7% decrease uh, in in uh, production due to the pandemic, uh, affecting the supply of uh, this uh, supply chain. And as a result, the price um, of cow increased by 14%. And similarly, uh, Asia countries, such as Indonesia and Malaysia, which produce uh, palm oil, have experienced a decrease in production also due to pandemic. Uh, and the decrease in production resulted in a 12% increase in palm oil uh, prices from uh, 2020 to 2021. And finally, in Latin America, countries such as um, Ecuador and Brazil, which produce sugar cans, uh, have experienced a decrease in production. Uh, and the decrease was uh, approximately 8%. Uh, in the sugar prices from 2020 to 2021. And the economic sanction imposed uh, on Russia by um, some countries have also had a significant impact on the logistics of the chocolate industry. Uh, like some of the sanctions have targeted um, specific industries, including uh, the food industry and leading to the disruption of supply chain. And for example, I could say that some of the sanctions have made it difficult for Russian chocolate manufacturers to uh, import raw materials from certain countries, leading to a shortage of ingredients and increased prices. So we could uh, move to the next slide. Um, to minimize the effects of uh, pandemics and the sanction on the logistic of the chocolate uh, industry, several measures uh, can be implemented. Firstly, um, manufacturers can seek to um, diversify their suppliers and sourcing regions to reduce um, reliance uh, on a single source, like uh, this will ensure that raw materials are available from different regions in case of disruption in one region, for example. And secondly, uh, chocolate manufacturers can um, increase their production flexibility by adopting new technologies and innovation, um, innovative um, manufacturing processes. And uh, this will enable them to quickly adjust their production um, supply chain or lines in response to changes in demand or supply chain disruption. So Elena will continue for yes. giving recommendations. Our next recommendation is investing in technology. It's really, really important nowadays. And for example, uh, big data analytics can provide real-time insights into supply chain performance. Uh, and by using this technology, companies can monitor the movements of ingredients uh, from different sources and ensure that they will arrive on time. Uh, so this technology can help to identify some problems that uh, occurred, uh, for example, because of some sanctions and also help to minimize this impact of sanctions. Uh, the next recommendation is to implement supply chain transparency. Uh, so it's uh, crucial uh, that uh, the, this company, uh, these companies uh, can trace the origin of the ingredients that they use and uh, it can also uh, help to identify any potential issues in supply chain and uh, find some solutions um, uh, to uh, before they can become a problem.
Uh, so here's also examples. So already some uh, bean to bar chocolate company are considering block blockchain technology as a good way of improving their transparency uh, with the uh, some ingredients supply chain. Uh, so this uh, technology blockchain can help trace uh, ingredients with real time information available, and also this uh, could um, um, be shared with uh, their customers. Uh, to them uh, uh, to ensure that they know everything uh, about the ingredients and uh, how it has been uh, held. Uh, next advice recommendation is investing in R&D, research and development. Um, so this could involve exploring new flavor combinations, for example, or developing new manufacturing te uh, techniques uh, that uh, require fewer imported, uh, imported ingredients. Uh, next is maintain open communication with their suppliers. Uh, so by having these strong uh, relationships, uh, communication with their suppliers, companies can be aware of any changes in the supply chain caused by sanctions. Um, and uh, that allows them to take some appropriate measures to minimize this um, bad effect on their businesses. Uh, and also this communication can help to build trust between these um, you know, chocolate manufacturers and their suppliers. Uh, so the next point is optimize logistics. Uh, the, um, so manufacturers can also optimize their logistics uh, to minimize these potential um, uh, disruptions. And, uh, and this could involve finding new transportation routes using more efficient modes of transport, uh, improving uh, transportation routes, and um, also improve warehouse management. Uh, so the next uh, is increase uh, efficiency. Uh, so companies need to focus on the efficiency in their production process to reduce this uh, amount of raw materials that they need. Uh, and this can be achieved through raw, uh, process improvements, equipment upgrades, and better management of resources. And the last, uh, develop long-term contracts, if it's possible nowadays with Russian companies. Uh, of course, that uh, uh, cannot totally help to reduce uh, the risk of any sudden disruption uh, due to sanction, but it can help to reduce this risk. Uh, so I think that's all that we wanted to say. And if you have any questions, we are ready to answer. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. A very imp impressive presentation. Really, uh, I welcome groups B, C, and D. Ask uh, the question to the presenters. And uh, I, I see that uh, Emil uh, want to want to uh, make a question. Uh, thank you, Alec. If the format lets me, uh, I can just. Uh, Ask a couple of questions if, if it's uh, it's if it's okay now. Yes, exactly. It's the right time to, to ask a question to this group here. Yeah. Thank you very much. So first of all, uh, my greetings and uh, hi everyone. So uh, unfortunately, so camera is not available for me now due to some uh, technical reasons, but I think it's not uh, not a case and not a problem for for uh, dealing with the session. Um, so first of all, thank you very much for for the group. Uh, I, I see that they made um, quite substantial overview analysis for for the macro supply chain system, and uh, it's very good that recommendations are on slide. I, I have actually two questions to the group and maybe to the last presenter. Uh, one of their uh, issue that was uh, the developing in long term contracts. That's definitely um, working and, and and supporting the idea of the sustainable supply chain. And what do you think about uh, transiting of supply chain system from uh, the number of sell and purchase contracts? Then the supplier is selling to producer, producer is selling to distributor, distributor to their to their final retailers, and no no, no matter their uh, digital or non digital. Uh, they are transferring to the consignation principle. And that principle is meaning that they are not selling to each other. They are letting the resource, like supplier to produce as raw material, producer to supply the finished goods, 
and further on uh, with the one common target to generate the final offtake in the end shelf. And when the offtake is happening, then the cash flow starting. How can you uh, um, how can you uh, comment it and have you analyzed this transition from sell and purchase contracts to to the consignation principle of, of supply chain? And my second question, just right now, so uh, you are mentioning um, investing in technology, and today's uh, uh, the the sustainable supply chain speaking a lot about starting uh, MIT principles is emerging transit. Uh, meaning that they are not using uh, warehousing systems that are um, storaging. So uh, transportation considered as the way of storaging, but on move in transit. And in this principle, if the companies that are not uh, using storages and warehouses and inventory that are sleeping, like in commas, of course, sleeping like in the warehouses, have you analyzed this principle as technological move from the warehousing and storaging to the emerging transit technologies that that are really reducing a substantial amount of uh, fixed uh, supply chain costs? Uh, that's my two uh, questions for for the group. Uh, so to be to be honest, we didn't analyze um, these um, contracts and uh, these new trends and new technologies. It was really interesting to hear about it. Thank you very much. Maybe uh, my colleagues uh, have some thoughts about this. Uh, yes, first of all, as Elena mentioned, thank you for those questions for these questions because it's really also. Uh, interesting in the point of view that um, we do not store actually products for a long time in one warehouse. Uh, we haven't analyzed it for our case because we were mainly focused on international transportation because it was also the case uh, for us and we checked um, mainly um, logistics that is possible right now due to sanctions, due to all the COVID restrictions. But in terms of technology and what uh, our systems can provide, uh, I think Russia is not uh, real, uh, has um, a modern approach to it because some of the systems are not uh, working, um, are not digitalized enough. We have still a lot of uh, bureaucracy and paperwork and some systems like you mentioned SAP and other um, systems that allow to digitalize it uh, needs to be implemented in Russia. But again, uh, digital IT sanctions are also here. And now uh, companies, uh, not every company, um, has this access to this kind of technology so um we haven't thought as i said about about it in our case but it's a really good action point to take and i think maybe in our discussion today also we will uh, discuss it with other colleagues and participants of this sex uh, sex uh, section so thanks again for these questions so my overall comment, so if you speak about contracts, you need to know the, the real typologies for the contracts because in supply chain, we cannot speak only on the general and macro level. Uh, it's built up from the micro supply chains. These are the, the, the real uh, contract typology arrangements. Though. So that's the first comment. Mm -hmm. And the second comment, so the whole supply chain system uh, from the part of suppliers, of producers, of uh, distributors, retailers, they think all the time about reducing the fixed costs. And the fixed co what, what what really kills the businesses and business models, that's are the fixed costs that arriving earlier than the demand, than the turnover from the market. And uh, the, the fixed cost is a big killer. So in, in this type of arrangement, so the companies are are reducing uh, the fix of storage costs and, and warehousing costs that cannot be compared with any other processing, transportation, uh, other costs. So this is the biggest part of supply chain costs for storage 
and if you have inventory in storage so that's 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 um that's initially you're you're producing big fixed cost impact to to the final uh cost of the product and uh, related to that issue so when when you speak about implementation of technology so that should be a real overview what kind of technologies and especially uh mit so I, i'm not listing all technologies that are more than today's uh, in supply chain uh, I will, I, I'm I'm considering from 100 to 150 uh, new arrivals for for the technological and the arrangement scale, but one of that that I wanted to to highlight and ask your your vision. Thank you. No more comments, colleagues. Thank Thank you. You. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, uh, well, uh, yes, it's time to go to group. It's time to go to group B. Uh, the topic is the same, and we would like to see kind of another view uh, to the to the task. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone present. Uh, we, uh, Greb Bukowski, Mikhail Putov, Valerie Sabarina, Piotr Bakteryov, um, are happy to. Uh, participate uh, in the Student Guider 2023 and are ready to reveal, analyze a significant part of uh, business, uh, it is logistics. We have prepared uh, the presentation and in 10 minutes we will tell it. So uh, our work uh, is divided into three sectors. Uh, firstly, it is what kind of raw material transportation system does Nestle have? And uh, what logistics tools do they use? Uh, secondly, key challenges uh, to logistics uh, caused by COVID and sanctions. And finally, and our recommendation, how we can minimize uh, sanction effect on the uh, integration supply. So uh, look at the first slide and the main logistic tools at Nestle. Uh, firstly, it is ECR. Uh, it is uh, Nestle main logistics strategy. Is the ECR? It is efficient consumer response strategy, which aims to quickly respond to market needs. Uh, secondly, it is ERP. Uh, for example, to manage the movement of material flows related to procurement, transportation, warehousing. Uh, storage of stocks, uh, stock story, and distribution. And Nestle uh, uses a modern corporate information system of the ERP. Uh, this system integrates all aspects of logistic operation and enables real time processing of necessary information using modern uh, logistic technologies. Uh, thirdly, uh, I want to tell about software. It is a uh, C, uh, SCM. Um, Nestle also improves its logistics for close collaboration with business partners, suppliers, uh, wholesalers, and using logistic technology and CCM, supply chain management software, uh, carefully develop of logistic operation, uh, qualified personnel, and their training ensure high quality logistics operations. Uh, contributing to profit growth and uh, increases the company's competitiveness. And finally, I want to tell about EME and OPL. L, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, fixed for warehousing and production accounting and uh, NEZUM. So it is developed by Nestle to coordinate uh, deliveries, production, and distribution. Uh, so the supply chain coordination system divides physical flow in the dependent periods of transportation and storage, uh, providing real-time information about the phase and state is a flow. So uh, next, uh, Valerie, tell about uh, different tools. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Thanks. So thank you. Here we go. Some more additional uh, tools that can be used in the supply chain management. For example, consider consolidated cargo. It can be used in to transport other ingredients. For example, sugar, milk, nuts. Uh, it means that these ingredients will be packed in containers and shipped 
by a single transport vehicle that uh, can be used in different modes of transport, such as sea, rail, road, uh, we have plenty of them. And also we have multimodal transportation. It uh, can be also used to deliver different ingredients that need to be across several modes of transport. For example, as I said, it uh, could be sea, rail, uh, road, and uh, other any, uh, ways of uh, transportation, but uh, each segment of the road will be performed uh, as uh, individual means of transports, but together they form a transport chain. So this is a simply way to making a supply chain management because we have a chain that uh, makes every uh, ingredient, every step making a chain. Uh, okay, on this slide, you can see key challenges uh, to logistics uh, caused by COVID-19 and uh, sanctions. Um, uh, in terms uh, of the problem uh, caused by COVID-19 and the sanctions, uh, the logistical uh, responsibility turned out uh, to be uh, very serious. Uh, some of the issues uh, identified uh, include uh, uh, disruptions uh, in uh, train uh, uh, chains uh, due to um, dandery uh, detection and uh, disruption, uh, work attraction, uh, uh, delays in uh, transportation and uh, increased uh, demand uh, for food. Uh, the sanctions also include the management of uh, logistics, uh, management uh, limiting uh, assets uh, to uh, market-oriented uh, uh, products, uh, as well as uh, increasing cost uh, and uh, um, bureaucratic uh, products. Um, this may uh, seem like an uh, expected delivery time, uh, price uh, increases, and uh, product uh, availability. Uh, to address uh, these uh, challenges, uh, logistics, uh, um, inspectors uh, may need uh, to consider new technologies uh, and uh, uh, increased uh, risk uh, to improve uh, efficiency and uh, flexibility, uh, such as using a digital uh, trading uh, and uh, communications uh, um, platform, uh, identifying um, security uh, measures uh, to um, protect uh, uh, students uh, and uh, exploring um, alternative uh, roads and uh, modern models of transport. Um, in general, uh, the um, appearance of uh, chocolate bars uh, on the store itself uh, is uh, characterized by various uh, factors and uh, logistic communicational uh, plays uh, and uh, important role in uh, uh, determining uh, their availability. Uh, however, COVID-19 uh, poses uh, significant uh, challenges uh, that involve uh, um, anticipated um, divisions uh, from the uh, study flow of uh, goods and services. Right now, I give a word to my colleague. Uh, so, about the recommendations to minimize sanctions effect on the ingredient supply supply chain. So, first of all, I want to say that it's like the classic approach um, approaches uh, which uh, each company should have. So, the first of all is diversify suppliers. So, relying on a single suppliers supplier for ingredients can be risky, especially during times of global uncertainty to minimize the impact of sanctions or disruptions caused by COVID, for example, from COVID-19, and consider sourcing ingredients from multiply suppliers. The next is improve supply chain visibility. Uh, it is important to have a clear understanding of our ingredient supply chain, so including where your supply, uh, suppliers are located, how long it takes for material to be delivered, and any potential disruptions um, that you can identify as potential issues early and uh, take uh, steps to address them before they become a major problem. The next is maintain inventory buffers. So it's like inventory uh, safe zone. And uh, it's, you, can, you can make it by having a safety stock of uh, critical materials. You can continue 
production, even even if there are delays or shortages. Uh, so consider the next is uh, consider alternative ingredients. So the if the ingredients you normally use uh, become unavailable due to sanctions or other disruptions, uh, consider alternative ingredients that can be used as substitutes. So and then last point is monitoring the situation and adapt quickly. So it's like uh, the axiom and uh, this may involve uh, adjusting your supply chain strategy, finding new suppliers or exploring new products, lines, potential uh, potential products and uh, that are less uh, impacted by the current situation. So that's it. Um, thank you so much for your attention, and uh, we are ready to ask you questions. And we already already have, have seen your questions. Um, if, if I can start, uh, I just tape uh, um, just uh, along your your speech the the questions, not to lose the time to to just to announce them and to to give you the chance to to read and prepare. The first question is the M2M -M technology in supply chain. So you, you you were starting with technological issue of supply chain, like uh, ERP systems and so on. And what is uh, uh, the role of M2M, -M, machines to machines, technologies in, uh, in supply chain? The second question, medium and small enterprises, uh, can they use ERP? Or ERP is only the shoes for the large companies or multinational companies. And the third, and the third question that you were mentioning in the beginning about the principle of consolidated cargo, and can it be applied with the cost sharing principle? Um, and it's uh, consolidated cargo is the final result of cost share. Just for for the knowledge, the cost share is mixing the cargos. When you have in one container, let's say the 25 pallets of 25 different producers, but traveling to the same destination. Uh, that are my questions. Okay, uh, so actually we can answer. Okay, about first question, M2M -to -M technology uh, role in uh, SCM. So um, I think, um, we can technology end to end technology can help companies. Uh, firstly, it is optimizing supply chain. Uh, secondly, it is integrated a lot of devices into one. I think uh, and uh, some. Um, I think it's it helps. Yeah. About second question, uh, can MSE use ERP? So it is a difficult questions. I remember. Um, we have already had a uh, conversation uh, with Emil about this and uh, how we can uh, integrate ERP system uh, to MSE. So uh, first of all, it is a problem about uh, human factor, how uh, staff are ready to uh, change, uh, ready to implement this system. So actually, uh, it's a question about uh, question two. And uh, okay, third question is sorry, can I repeat? Uh, the third is um, you were mentioning consolidated cargo principle. That's absolutely clear, and that's absolutely uh, required today. Can it be applied by code sharing technology? So, do you understand the question, or I can rephrase it? Actually, I I understand, uh, but uh, how can so in other ways? So the question yes. is that the supply chain is going to be with the consolidated cargo principle, or it's going to be with the cost sharing principle that mixing different producers in one transportation platforms that are dispatched to the same destination. Well, 
let me let me help a little bit uh, yeah. because when we are talking about uh, consolidated cargo, it's more related to the kind of small uh, or middle-sized businesses. In our particular case, we are talking about uh, chocolate manufacture, and for them, uh, the code sharing is much much more important because they anyway operates with a full-scale container due, just due to the size of the business. So I would say that. Yes, Emil, you are absolutely right that uh, the uh, cargo, uh, sh shared consolidated cargo is a very good tool and a very good instrument uh, to minimize the cost of the, of the logistic. But in this particular case, which guys are presenting, we're talking about full-size uh, manufacture. That's why kind of this is not really relevant to this particular case. Sorry to, okay, kind of, uh, to, to but, give my uh, comments here. Yeah. Okay, but uh, if you don't mind, uh, we can talk about last mile. And in this mile, we can uh, consolidate uh, any bar. Totally, Oleg, but this is a task for CND group. Let's let's give them, <laughs> <laughs> use this argument. Yeah. Okay, it's absolutely. Clear. It's clear, okay. Oh. Okay, uh, I, I suggest to go to next group. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Maybe other colleagues having okay. questions. So I'm sorry, I'm just putting all the questions <laughs> myself. Maybe the other uh, participants are having the questions or, or comments. Well, yes, but Emil, you are the biggest expert. So actually you, your questions are the most <laughs> valuable. So thank you. I don't want to to, to stall the show. <laughs> that, that, that there is the um, okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, good. Uh, I think we can move further. So, as as as, as you remember, the first uh, group A and B were preparing uh, the idea how to supply the chocolate manufacture, which is located in the European part of Russian Federation. So, you did your job well. All ingredients are at place. Uh, chocolate bar management was also uh, doing well. So the chocolate bars are ready. Now it's moved from ingredient to so-called finished goods. So now the question to group C and D, how to make this chocolate bar already manufactured to appear in the shelf of the store nearby of you. Or perhaps so groups, in, your, groups. in your table. <laughs> yeah. So. So now, kind of from international, we go to the local logistic processes. Yes, um, hello everyone. Uh, we are going to discuss the logistic, logistic process of chocolate bars within the country. Uh, let's start with, uh, with logistic path in general. The main supplier of uh, cocoa beans uh, to Russia is a uh, Cote d'Ivoire. It is cheaper to make deliveries by ship to the th southern um, ports of Russia. Therefore, it is more profitable to locate chocolate production uh, plants closer to the source of supply. Uh, the agricultural industry is also well de developed in the south. Uh, other ingredients for the production of goods uh, can be purchased from local producers. So that's why it is better. Um, in Russia, we have well-developed system of roads and railways, uh, system of airports as well, uh, which could be used to transfer product uh, throughout the country. Uh, the cheapest way to transport goods inside the country from west to east is using trains. Uh, therefore, we have put on the slide map of uh, Russia with outlined railways. Uh, then it is possible to bring chocolate bars from large train station to settlements on trucks uh, with equipment for storing melting products. Uh, as for settlements where there is no infrastructure to use um, vehicles, uh, delivery might be done with the help of airplanes. Uh, also, new technologies uh, could be used to 
automate and improve transportation efficiency. Uh, first one is uh, Internet of Things, uh, especially sensors uh, can be used uh, to track the temperature, uh, humidity, and other environment environmental um, factors during transportation. This is um, particularly uh, important for transporting chocolate bars, which are sensitive to change uh, in temperature. Uh, also, blockchain technology uh, could be used to track the movement of goods across the supply chain, uh, including uh, transportation. This technology uh, could provide uh, transparency and uh, traceability, reducing uh, the risk of fraud, uh, theft, and other issues. It can also improve um, efficiency by reducing paperwork and streamlining the processes. As for uh, ECG, uh, move to the next slide, please. Uh, the ECG agenda in Russia uh, despite the th sanctions uh, pressure remains and uh, is becoming increasingly relevant for large businesses, especially. Uh, the number mm -hmm. of companies that include the agenda of uh, sustainable development goals uh, in their strategy is increasing. Uh, grocery stores also have uh, ECG requirements mm -hmm. in relation to manufacturers so it is crucial to take into account requirements of uh, stores, of partner stores, uh, in order to avoid problems in the field, in this field in the future. For instance, X5 retail group stores uh, <coughs> have the most requirements, including 38 over recommendations. Uh, Magnet has uh, uh, four over requirements and uh, the least uh, number of requirements mm. as okay. Uh, so um, it should also be considered. Uh, well, let's proceed to key challenges to logistics caused by COVID-19 and sanctions. Uh, COVID-19 and sanctions have uh, presented various challenges to logistics across the world. And uh, as for the COVID-19, uh, the first problem is uh, dis disruption in supply chain. Uh, the pandemic has led to a significant disruption in global supply chains uh, with lockdowns and restrictions in place. There has been a reduction in uh, production and transportation capacity, uh, leading to delays and delivery. Uh, inability uh, to deliver goods uh, with the uh, closure uh, of border points and restrictions on transportation, the movement of goods has become very challenging and sometimes impossible, resulting in a shortage of essential goods and services. Um, increase, increased costs, uh, the pandemic has led to an increase um, in transportation and production costs uh, with lockdowns and restrictions. Many goods are being uh, delivered via air transport, uh, which is more expensive and the manufacturers must deal with decreased productivity and increase in input costs. Uh, also increased uh, regulations, new restrictions on various uh, conditions on uh, storage of goods. Uh, companies must uh, com comply with these uh, restrictions, uh, which can result in delays in delivery goods uh, or services or facing additional fees. Um, Safety concerns. Um, the pandemic has led to safety concerns for logistics workers, increasing the cost of transportation and the additional measures that must be taken to ensure safety. Uh, and finally, air, air, air transportation collapsed. Uh, on the graph, you can see the results of uh, the impact of the pandemic. According to the International Air Transport Association, the number of aircraft that are to flying reached a pre-pandemic value only in March 2023. It took almost exactly three years for 28, 29,000 aircraft around the world to return to operation again. But uh, on the other hand, the COVID-19 uh, has uh, brought several positive changes to logistics industry 
uh, for example, um, uh, increased adoption of technology uh, to maintain uh, social distancing. Uh, logistics companies have had to increase the use of technology. This has led to a high adoption rate of digital processes, including electronic documentation, digital tracking systems, and uh, contactless delivery. Um, also improved safety measures. Uh, the pandemic has uh, enhanced uh, uh, safety measures in warehousing, packaging, and transportation. Um, companies are adhering to strict uh, hygiene uh, protocols, such as regula regular sanitization, PPE usage, uh, and social distancing, which has made logistics operations safer for workers. Uh, adopting to changing demand, uh, the pandemic um, necess necessitated a sudden shift or in demand for logistics services, uh, with a sharp decline in some sectors and a massive surge uh, in others, uh, such as e-commerce. Uh, companies have had to adopt quickly to accommodate uh, these changes, which uh, has led to more dynamic and responsive logistics networks. Um, enhanced supply chain visibility. Uh, the pandemic exposed uh, vulnerabilities uh, in supply chains, uh, promoting logistics companies to prioritize end-to-end -end visibility. This has to lead development of new approaches such as real-time tracking and predictive analytics in logistics operations. Uh, also, uh, collaboration and innovation. The pandemic has brought a greater focus on collaboration and innovation within the logistics industry. Uh, companies uh, are working with technology partners and other stakeholders to find new ways to optimize efficiency and uh, also reduce costs. Uh, yes, thank you. And let's talk about sanctions. Um, firstly, I want to say that uh, sanctions also uh, made a negative impact on um, transportation insurance and many insurance companies refused to work with Russian companies because of uh, the risk uh, uh, of an insurance in event is high. Mm, maybe that's why um, cargo become more popular. Um, but the next, um, suppliers from unfriendly countries were divided into two camps. Uh, who wants to conti continue trading with Russia and who doesn't? Fortunately, there are companies in friendly countries uh, that make a deal incognito and uh, an uh, unfriendly country enters into a supply contract with a country that is not under sanctions. Uh, then the goods uh, are sent to Russia, but unfortunately, some suppliers understand that uh, this product can be sent to Russia and block such uh, transactions. Um, also, as a result of the sanctions, Russian suppliers were forced to uh, look for new suppliers and uh, in this regard, Russia uh, has become in close contact with uh, Asian countries um, that are ready to meet the demand. Uh, and uh, we have some recommendations how to minimize uh, sanctions effect. Um, firstly, uh, the, uh, diversify suppliers. If um, one supplier is affected by sanctions, having multiply suppliers uh, can help the company to ensure a consistent supply of uh, ingredients. And the company also can make uh, deliveries to smaller, smaller ones. Uh, so um, so uh, that when a transaction is blocked due to sanction, sanctions, the frozen uh, amount is not critical for the company. Also, um, the company may look for alternative uh, sources uh, of ingredients uh, that are not um, affected by sanctions, uh, such as suppliers from other countries. And also, um, a good recommendation, I think, keep, it that, keep in touch with um, suppliers uh, to stay up to date of any changes in their business um, processes, operations due to uh, the sanctions and um, to discuss potential solutions. Also, um, they should review contracts, uh, review exciting, uh, exciting, exciting contracts with suppliers 
to understand the obligations and uh, any measures they uh, have in place to uh, mitigate the impact, impact of sanctions. Mm. Also be flexible. It's uh, just our life. Uh, it's our life uh, at this moment. Uh, everyone should be flexible uh, to uh, consider being flexible with payment terms or delivery uh, schedules to maintain a good relationship uh, with suppliers, especially during uh, these um, challenging times. Also, uh, the company uh, should stay informed uh, about any changes in the sanctions uh, and the impact uh, they may have on the supply chain. And uh, uh, the next recommendation is uh, to import uh, substitution. Uh, nowadays, nowadays, it's a trend. Um, it's necessary to look for domestic um, domestic um, producers who are ready to give the same level of uh, quality and quantity of raw materials. And uh, of course, choose suppliers from friendly countries. Um, when, uh, you when the company selects suppliers, it's necessary to uh, filter uh, out unfriendly countries with the uh, first level of filtering. Um, and I, I want to add that um, it's possible to consider cooperation uh, uh, with the suppliers from Belarus. Firstly, uh, the, chocolate, the chocolate in Belarus uh, is very tasty. And uh, I think that companies will be interested uh, in cooperation with uh, a Russian company. And uh, we have a free economic zone, uh, which removes a lot of headache, uh, headaches uh, with delivery. Uh, so that's all we wanted to say. And now we are ready uh, to answer your questions. Okay, thank you. May, may I start? Uh, can, you, can I ask you to go to the slide number one or two with the railways network across Russia? So exactly. So the, my question is uh, who uh, you are, for example, you are uh, a chocolate manufacturer. What company could provide you, provides you, uh, or provide you in Russia, the full-scale delivery uh, to retail outlets? Uh, just to count, there are more, more than two hundred fifty thousand retail outlets across Russia. And what type of company could provide you this full logistic at national scale? Please, do you have any ideas? Again, quarter of million retail outlets to be supplied with the chocolate bars. So uh, maybe, maybe Natalia, it's not a question to you. Maybe it's a question to uh, the guys who was making the the first slide. Uh, so it's it's group question. Are there really uh, do such company exists in Russia which can provide the uh, such scale of operation at national at national level. Uh, well, um, do you want to um, some name of company or some characteristics? Or just describe, just describe what should be uh, the company. Uh, or if, okay. you, if, if uh, you know names, great. Uh, 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 well, um, we think that uh, such company should has uh, quite um, um, effective of. Um, transport uh, management system to uh, predict and uh, probably some using uh, some um, artificial intelligence to uh, re regulate all uh, logistics uh, and uh, um, try to prevent any overstocking or shortage in some places uh, to uh, mm, probably to reach uh, just in time um, effect uh, because nowadays a lot of um, uh, nowadays uh, small um, warehousing um, waiting um, goods every day so uh, all the processes should should be um, automated as as much as it possible 
so such companies should, uh, uh, of course, use some technologies instead of uh, manual work of some uh, um, people. So you just described uh, Sberbank, for example. Uh, so it's uh, Sberbank uh, infrastructure, the Bank, as they call it now. Uh, but the question is, uh, uh, physically, uh, you all know the, the, the distance. For example, I just in the middle of the map, there is a Lysysibirsk north to Krasnoyarsk. Mm -hmm. How you could be really sure that the product from factory located, let's say, in Ariol would appear in Lysysibirsk? How long it could take? And what mm -hmm. uh, way of transportation could be used to bring the product there? I think that um, I think that um, it depends on uh, budget of uh, the company. But uh, I work with uh, logistic uh, companies uh, of delivering uh, uh, mining um, equipment, and uh, for us, uh, the most important is uh, the speed and uh, uh, the experience uh, that the company uh, have has. Um, so I think uh, if we talk about uh, um, food delivery, mm -hmm. they can use um, air to, uh, to be faster um, because it's really important for food. Um, but if we talk about um, all the supply chain, I think uh, this company should choose uh, logistic uh, uh, logistics uh, with um, a previous experience uh, in uh, this field. So um, I I will choose the company that um, had uh, problems with the delivery because of sanctions before, but now they have uh, a new ways of solutions and. Uh, they are flexible and uh, they are not afraid of any changes. Uh, so it will be important for me. Mm -hmm. Well, still, uh, it's... Can I also uh, add yes, something? Yes, please, that, yeah. um, I think that the best and the cheapest way is using train. So uh, the best candidate to do it is uh, companies with connections uh, which have uh, uh, which have departments in each region so they could um, provide safety and efficient delivery during the whole way and uh, such as Dilavilini uh, I guess SDEC has some uh, uh, some offer for businesses maybe DHL, uh, et cetera, uh, such companies that has experience and work with uh, trains, planes, and vehicles as well. Well, and here we come to the most important, uh, the most important question is, uh, do you realize that it can't uh, be sent, let's say in a uh, cargo truck, in a, in a carriage straight from factory to, I don't know, to Lysysibirsk, which I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. You can't send the, the carriage straight from one point to another. Because, yeah. uh, and then the question is, uh, I'm looking, I'm waiting that the last mile delivery will appear in your in your presentation because it's, it's critical. So the product could arrive to the train station Lysysibirsk, but then it will be a task how to distribute it to the, I don't know, 150 stores, which is around uh, the train station. So the question is, uh, and unfortunately, uh, to be fair, there is no such company in Russia, or maybe there are one or two companies in Russia who can provide you this global scope uh, of operations. Uh, but uh, it's really very rarely because the number of the company who can provide both so-called magistral logistic, long, long distance logistic, and first mile, those who, companies who can combine both expertise, I would count it at, at one hand uh, finger. So, uh, 
and so the, the question is uh, that's why we were talking that it should be kind of a practical a practical uh, exercise mm -hmm. that if there are necessity to bring chocolate bar from factory to uh, the store uh, shelf there are se several uh, several uh, stages of this delivery and uh, unfortunately or it would be great if uh, blockchain could give us the opportunity to uh, forecast uh, the consumption in each small store in Russia and give uh, uh, straight delivery well, but at current level of technologies uh, it's always several uh, stages of the proceeding or repackaging or splitting the uh, cargo to make this uh, delivery delivery happens and actually it's not uh, feasible for the factory to uh, split the whole uh, volume which they produce to 250,000 small um, packs or boxes mm -hmm. to distribute them directly to to retail stores that's why the uh, work of distributors, those companies who are actually making this job, uh, should be somehow highlight, highlighted. I believe so because this is the this companies which actually received on their warehouse the the product, and then make a last mile delivery. Uh, this gives a certain level of the concentration of the competences of the co competences competencies, sorry, <laughs> to the uh, to the right to the, to the uh, say right selection of the, of the partners, because well at this stage at you alone it's really very it it you could do it via uh, logistic companies or via uh, Russian Post, but it it will cost you a fortune uh, because individual delivery really extremely extremely uh, expensive as you could see now uh, with uh, Wildberries or with Azon. Uh, these companies actually generate, at, even at this stage, generate some losses to the to the owners. So, uh, so sorry uh, for the kind of uh, long, kind of for taking your time on, on the questions. Uh, I, I saw uh, Emily had prepared several questions. I just want to be absolutely clear with you that uh, it is not um, a simple process. That and, and if uh, one um, entity can't actually uh, physically can't hold all the competences, it's a standard, it's actually a worldwide standard to use someone or to use uh, some partners or to use some uh, executors to execute the job where they have competence, so called uh, corporations. Okay, uh, sorry if again for the long speech, uh, but I, I believe it was it was interesting for you to to listen from the practical perspective how it works. Actually, I know only one, actually one company. It's Megapolis Group who would provide you national distribution. This is a huge uh, company which provides um, distribution for the tobacco across the whole country. But it's again it's only one example which uh, come to me. Azon and Wildberries, they're making kind of difference. They're making kind of warehouse to warehouse to individuals delivery and still their coverage is not yet national. So I'm shutting down. Yeah, thank you. It was uh, interesting. Um, I can, I see some uh, question chat, I can start to answering them. So the first one is, uh, is uh, what are the principles of ECG? Uh, give two or three of them. So uh, in general, ECG uh, stands for environment, social and governments. Um, it is three factors. Each include some important um, aspects that influence uh, the business process, I think. So as for environment, sure, uh, it includes uh, climate change problem, uh, 
pollution problem, uh, renewable energy for sure. As for social, I think uh, it is uh, discrimination aspect, some uh, the aspect that the issue that company has to take care about its personnel, uh, about their health. And for governance, I think uh, the the most important uh, sphere uh, aspect is uh, corruption and uh, maybe uh, honest and equal uh, equal connection with uh, each participant of uh, business industry i think uh, is it enough about this question i think uh, yes so for the second one uh, have we analyzed uh, ASL uh, aggregated service level of uh, SC uh, is is it a question about uh, about the satisfaction of customers of the service actually not um, this is the question of uh, every company uh, that that's your you have in the slide in the list uh, is having an aggregated service level of its supply chain system. Uh, it can be internal or it can be applied to the whole companies. Like you have two hundred suppliers, you have five production sites, you have uh, I don't know seventy distributors and uh, two hundred fifty thousand retail outlets. That's are that are applied for for different chains. Uh, but anyway, so we take a company inside the supply chain and it's having aggregated service level that is consisting of classically of the four criteria. One of the big supply chain criteria is the rate of out of stock. The second criteria is the rate of delivery on time. The first criteria is the, the rate of conditionals. And the fourth uh, criteria that's the rate of documentary support level. They are aggregating together the result. And if your uh, service level, let's say 98%, that's meaning that 8% of your potential turnover, you're not doing due to their uh, lack of supply chain service. And that was my question. Have you analyzed this system as for the corporate businesses, the mainstreaming now, they are considering that uh, that you, if you are not generating the turnover at the end shelf, um, one of the first reason of that not not the lack of demand or marketing tools or etc., but one of the reason that internal no organization, internal uh, shortages and internal errors in supply chain system. And to analyze these errors, we need to apply the instrument that there is the uh, quant quantitative instrument that is applied for ACL. That's the question, have you analyzed or not? That's not the question, what is that about? Uh, and the first question, uh, the third question is related to chalk producers and the usage of tolling. Yes, I think about the third one. Uh... It is um, uh, also for producing chocolate. Uh, companies are using cacao powder, and I don't know as it is for today. But previously, uh, Russia, uh, in Russia, uh, Germany, uh, imported a lot of co uh, uh, cocoa powder in Russia. So I think, uh, as far as I know, there are no cocoa train uh, trees in uh, in german so i think uh, this um, this transportation was made by tolling uh, do you understand what is tolling mm, i think yes it means that um, country or enterprise uh, 
in some way uh, re reprodu reproducing a product or and then transfer it to another country uh, to another enterprise in another country that's not mm. precisely so tolling is meaning that you are mm. uh, you're purchasing raw materials uh finding the toller that is located outside of your country mm. you are still the producer and you are the, you are delivering the raw material outside to produce the finished goods with the obligation to return back the finished goods to your country to your inland and yeah. uh, uh, that's the change that you are transferring as being a producer to the cross docker that's the other reason why the, the companies are doing tolling. That's due to the fixed cost and so on and so on. But a special thing that this industry is tolling users or tolling applied or it's not applied. For example, in oil and gas, tolling is used. Uh, I think that answer is yes. It is applied. Uh, some uh, uh, some companies uh, uh, transfer uh, some parts uh, some uh, like cacao powder to to another company some uh, produce for uh, for the end user the whole chocolate bars by this technology by this procedure so we well, can... uh, let me let me uh, Emil. It's actually a very interesting question. Uh, my uh, feeling was that uh, initial feeling was that no, I, it's not the fact. But then I realized that actually it has the fact uh, with uh, uh, private labels of retail uh, uh, chains who are actually bringing to the factory uh, their whole uh, materials, raw materials and ingredients and then order the product according to their receipts and then get uh, get all the everything back so it's not like international tolling but i would say that outsourcing of manufacture rarely happening in in in, in russia and even rarely happening in this industry so yes. uh, I, I, I just think, don't I know is it so. can we call it tolling if it's all stay in one country uh actually um uh, actually the 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 core uh, of this uh, word is toll that's meaning that this is the the customs uh customs so okay <laughs> then the, then it should be kind of then it's not the fact that i would say it's outsource manufacture no, no, no. it's it's, it's it, 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 you're you're absolutely right tolling can be used internally because it started as uh export import without mm -hmm. That you are uh, bringing out raw materials with obligations to bring the back finished goods, uh, and you have no any duties, no any clearings in this mm -hmm. uh, this operation. Uh, but when we speak about, for example, Russia and Belarus, then you can bring out raw materials like cacao powder and bring back the chocolate as finished goods. Or vice versa, from Belarus to Russia, yeah, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's it's common uh, common union. Uh, mm -hmm. Inside you can do that, and uh, in this specific specific case, as producer, you are transferring as the cross docking center. So you are not producing anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, your core responsibility is to control the purchase of raw materials mm -hmm. and the cost of the taller production. And then uh, you know a lot of the companies are doing tolling with China. When mm -hmm. they are, when seeking and finding the the raw materials, they they are uh, exporting uh, to China raw materials, bringing back the finished goods. So this is uh, for these companies the major uh, stream for controlling the quality of the product is controlling the the raw material aspect, the source, the price, the quality of raw materials. But of course, tolling started as export import is international, but mm -hmm. of course, we use it in the local level. That's why I agree with mm -hmm. you, your comment. And my question was, I don't know. It's not the question that I know and I want to know. Mm -hmm. I seriously know that. I don't know. I know that timber industry is using tolling, uh, oil and gas industry using tolling. And my question was the chocolate industry using tolling or not. 
That was uh, that was the question. Okay. Well, uh, definitely they use contract manufacture. Definitely, but uh, uh, I just want to tell you that the that the level of excise for the for the cacao is zero. So actually, there is no really big intent or big reason to use tolling to minimize uh, tolls uh, uh, excise. Mm -hmm. Because uh, yeah. still, still for the materials which don't uh, harvest in, in Russia, I mean, co coffee, cacao, cocoa, uh, so they use a minimal, uh, minimal excise, uh, excise uh, percentage, minimum toll, uh, minimum toll um, size. Mm -hmm. So then, then maybe it's not so, so interesting for the manufacturer to use this scheme to. Uh, for, for the for the efficiency of the uh, finished good price. Okay, and there is important uh, that uh, chocolate uh, uh, require requires uh, uh, strict uh, strictly um, uh, conditions for storage and transportation, fifteen degree plus minus three, and. Uh, and of course, uh, if you know, uh, chocolate bar uh, can um, lose and a half of taste if uh, uh, chocolate bar uh, moves through um, supply chain more than three or four weeks. It's actually, uh, Oleg, uh, absolutely right, because uh, we just were my, I'm in line with you because uh, guys, uh, it was a very nice question about aggregated service level, because actually this what all big uh, manufacturer or big retail chain chains uh, target their their suppliers, mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, important. For example, uh, the company where currently works has a level of the we call this index in full on time means that the all orders which we received are delivered to retail uh, store uh, within 24 hours. So uh, it's 99.8%. This is how uh, our suppliers like Pepsi, like uh, Nestle, yeah. like um, uh, in BFFS, this is the level uh, of expectation. Uh, what is the quality of the service we could provide them? And if we are not dealing well, we first penalized, and then we actually can lose these uh, contracts. So I mean that the service level uh, requirements are critical for the all big big players because uh, this is the the real the area where they can either uh, win or benefit on the quality, either go to a significant waste of the resources if the quality of the providers is not at the expected level. So I would say this is a really very correct and very important uh, questions which Emil uh, had raised in, during this presentation. Okay, I, I think we should uh, go, go to next group. Yep, yeah. please, mm -hmm. Group D. Yes, Group D is here. So let me share the screen. Uh, can you see? Yes, we can. Uh, okay, so let's uh, firstly, I would like to. Uh, represent the members of my team. So this is me, Lisa Svechenko, third year student of IBS, uh, Leah and Sava. So I think uh, we can start uh, presenting the solution which uh, we came up with. Uh, okay, first question uh, which we were supposed to answer was uh, the fact uh, how uh, goods uh, get uh, to the shelves of uh, the stores which we go every day. So uh, we uh, made a, a little investigation and uh, we 
came up with the routes of ways and ways of transportation, uh, transportation across Russia. You know, like lots of uh, other people have already told about this, but this is a fact which uh, doesn't change. So we thought that we also need to, to talk about this. So this is truck, freight, ship, train, plane, cars, and railway. You know, like Russia is the biggest country in the world and uh, we must have uh, lots of different supply chains and roads. And um, on the next slide, uh, you can see ways of delivering. So we have uh, a different approach on the uh, on this case because we more investigated uh, different companies so which help deliver uh, products on the shelves. So we have Airbridge Cargo, which is the biggest uh, air company uh, which can uh, deliver goods from one place of our country to another. And we have a very well-known RGD. It's a railway company uh, which is... Uh, which works uh, among our country in the whole parts of it, even the uh, remote, even in the most remote. So we have uh, decided that maybe it can be the solution of how uh, the goods uh, get to the shops. Uh, okay, so you know, like uh, DHL, UPS, and FedEx uh, have left our country recently, uh, but uh, I don't think that this is a big uh, major problem for Russian logistics uh, because we have. RGD, uh, Airbridge Cargo, we have Dilovy Rishenis Technology, or Dilovy Linie, excuse me, not Dilovy Rishenis Technology. And uh, uh, also, we uh, managed to investigate like the experience of uh, big players on the market, like X5 Retail Group. And we have found an amazing fact that uh, X5 have has uh, its uh, retail infrastructure and uh, it has corporate centers. Uh, which helps, uh, which help to uh, automate warehouses and uh, pickings across uh, the whole our country. So I think that uh, this is uh, may be the solution to the case. Okay, now let's move on to the impact of COVID nineteen, which had a dramatic effect. And I'm going to give a word to the other team member. So you're welcome. Oh, hello, everyone. So key challenges to logistics caused by COVID and sanctions uh, has disrupted, have disrupted supply chains around the world and uh, it presents vast logistics challenges everywhere. Uh, first of the COVID impacts is uh, that capacity was evaporated. Uh, in normal times, uh, ocean freight is typically around 90% of global trade volume, but the pandemic initially curtailed the supply of manufactured goods out of Asia, uh, then uh, rippled across the world and sent demand for goods shipped by ocean freight plummeting. Uh, ocean carriers uh, responded by removing shipping capacity from the market canceling sailings and eliminating strings where vessels call on several parts before reaching a final destination. Ocean freight capacity is starting to bottom out and stabilize. Uh, the second one is fluctuating demand. COVID-19 has turbocharged the consumer shift to online buying uh, and e-commerce uh, demands uh, rapid fulfillment and delivery that is also ex inexpensive for the consumer. Uh, the third one is uh, geographic risk. The crisis also provides an uh, opportunity to reevaluate supply chain locations. At the start of the pandemic, when China shattered production, uh, for example, some youth fashion retailers said that uh, more than 70% of their stock was sourced from the country um, the, and disruption to its industries have left electronics retailers facing delays of 10 weeks on shipments. And uh, the same is true for brands producing in other countries. Uh, supply chains, uh, for example, in China are highly efficient uh, the labor force large and skilled, and the market uh, vast and growing. Uh, China's production is deeply integrated with inputs from, uh, from and production in other Asian markets. 
China, for instance, is a major source of fabric for garment uh, manufacturers in the region, making it hand to remove from the equation altogether. The fourth one is uh, inventory management. Consider the COVID-19 bullwhip effect, uh, the changes in consumer demand that triple through the supply chain at ever greater magnitudes, uh, creating long-term problems for production and supply. Uh, this can be seen in the one-off search in demand for toilet paper, stock out one week, then excess inventory build up the next, from goods delayed to goods unwanted, uh, the pandemic has created inventory chaos. And uh, what for sanctions effects? Uh, among the most affected by the imposed sanctions, of course, were those industries that directly depended on imports. Uh, these are, for example, electronic manufacturers, oil and gas industry enterprises, uh, etc. The refusal of foreign uh, ship owners to work with Russia has become the most sensitive and then can be regarded as a de facto maritime trade blockade of Russia. Russian foreign trade was more than 90% dependent on foreign ships and, for example, in such a segment as container transportation, almost 100%. Uh, after the aggravation of the geopolitical situation, geopolitical situation, I'm sorry, the world's uh, leading logistics uh, giants, primarily corporations associated with sea container transportation, uh, refused to work with Russia cargo overnight. And this direction has suffered the most serious losses and difficulties since the introduction of sanctions. Another area of logistics that has felt the impact of European sanctions already in the first months of aggravation in the political arena is uh, aviation. Europe has almost completely closed its uh, airspace to Russian aircraft. And Russia, in response, has adopted similar sanctions against aircraft belonging to European countries. Such leaders of aircraft technology as Boeing and Aerobus uh, have stopped supplying components for Russian aircraft. Outside the country, uh, air transport under lease is arrested. Certificates of uh, airworthiness are revoked. Uh, in addition, foreign Courier services has, uh, have also suspended work in Russia. Uh, American FedEx and UPS, uh, German DHL. Uh, while DHL continues to transport goods across Russia. Uh, road transport from and to Europe continues to work. And uh, one of the packages of Western sanctions imposed restrictions on entry into the Europe, Europe for Russian companies that transport goods by road, but it's possible for European carriers um, to import goods into Russia, and many of them um, took advantage of their monopoly position and inflated prices for their services. Um, it should also be noted here that not all European carriers agree to pass through the territory of Russia, in particular due to the unwillingness of insurance companies to insure drivers, vehicles and cargo. Uh, the movement of motor transport further constrains uh, the indecision of European suppliers who have uh, temporarily stopped shipping goods to Russia because they just fear that they may fall under sanctions even uh, retroactively and uh, what this may be fraught with for them. Uh, often this also applies to goods that are not prohibited for transportation and shipment uh, due to uncertainty and uh, misunderstanding and shipment or oh, of the, um, I'm sorry, 
uh, misunderstanding of the legislation in the country of departure, suppliers refuse to work with the Russian Federation just in case. And uh, at the same time, the list of goods prohibited for export from the European changes almost daily. Changes almost daily. Exporters uh, usually have the opportunity to contact chambers of commerce, uh, customs, and other authorities to find out the procedure related to their products. But in many cases, uh, they prefer not to do this. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it may take up to several months to receive a response from these authorities. And obviously, all this dramatically raises the price of cargo transportation, and there are always risks that the goods may simply not reach the Russian buyer. So now let's turn to the third question. Sasa. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. So, Let's talk about sanction solution recommendation. Uh, but firstly, let's start with key challenges. It could be capacity, collection demand, geographic risks, and uh, inventory management. So uh, everybody already said a lot of words about this. Uh, so we kind of changed our recommendations uh, using the new uh, Sava, you are muted. Oh. <laughs> you are muted again. Why am I muted? I don't know, but we can hear you like. Uh, uh, told you already a lot of good information at the gate. Uh, so let's do, let's move to recommendation. So firstly, we changed a little bit our recommendation uh, and used uh, a new ideas uh, based on uh, our experience. Uh, firstly, is increased focus on domestic market. Maybe uh, you can find a alternative market in in Russia and you can change uh, ingredients and make it better chocolate maybe a good uh, plan maybe is to save it as eco-friendly and uh, this is what uh, all Russians love uh, second is uh, automation a process so this is about automating is becoming increasingly important in logistics to, to the need to work more efficiently. So without it, companies risk losing uh, to competitors and uh, there's a lot of IT solutions uh, such as uh, fleet and route optimization, uh, which can help uh, to, to provide a better service. And uh, the last one could be a register re-register so maybe you can try to open branches in our countries and uh, redirect goods uh, on behalf of a foreign company such as kazakhstan i have seen a lot of uh, companies are doing it right now so to summarize you have to um, restructure the logistic routes using the transit countries uh, change the supplies if it's possible and uh, try to re-register in another company which doesn't um, have a sanction. <clears throat> sanction. Well, uh, may I ask the question, uh, please uh, explain how distribution of chocolate bar or delivery chocolate bar from a factory in Russia uh, to the retail store in Russia why it could require re-registration of the of the suppliers because uh, yeah well, this question was about the sanctions which could be on uh, the materials on the production of the chocolate okay so this is not about uh, uh, the thing country oh also i wanted to mention that uh, you can use the marketplaces uh, logistics 
and a, lo a lot of uh, marketplaces nowadays are um, outsource their logistics. Uh, uh, well, we are lucky uh, to live in the European part of Russia because most of the uh, marketplaces doesn't serve the areas, let's say, outside of the of the major of the major geography A and B, maybe C strata cities. And then uh, you can use the post, the Russian post, to get your to get your parcel, but it will cost uh, extra money, and of course, it is not the right cost for the chocolate bar, which you can buy everywhere. So uh, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Sava. Yeah. Uh, as I heard, the Azon, the company Azon, is uh, now investing like uh, thirty million dollars in. Uh, uh big uh, logistic warehouse in Kazakhstan and maybe we will try to work uh, on it uh, in future it will be easy but it, it 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 is building not for the purpose of the in, in, in improved distribution of the chocolate bar across let's say asian part of the russia it's it's doing for for, for other purposes but okay uh it's maybe the the our fault that we didn't formulated the task uh, so straight because our our intent was to uh, ask you thinking how the ideal distribution model uh, inside the Russia should look like and what are really impact of the sanctions of, of the military operation to this uh, uh, to this uh, distribution model. Because actually, what uh, neither of the teams had faced that now there is all the sanctions affected in a significant uh, growth of the price for the trucks, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, significant uh, growth of the price for the spare parts, and it grows to the deficit of the professional drivers, because many of them now uh, are using for the logistic. Uh, for the operations, uh, for the defense operations. So that means that um, so there are a lot of factors uh, which neither of group had been uh, discovered. And uh, well, it's actually the question for us, for uh, Oleg Gashev and for myself, that my, probably we could, we articulated the task uh, not so clear that the idea was to ask you to think uh, what is uh, what ways of the operations uh, are using to distribute the Finnish goods from one point of Russia to another? Because Russia is a continent. It's really such a huge geography that inside one uh, legislation, so there is no any kind of internal boundaries and everything, but uh, the way of transportation the way of the uh, cargo splitting based on the demand of particular retail outlets is really a, a critical. And uh, at this stage, I would say that um, you were answering not to the question of the particular topic, but to the very general, to the very general kind of um, uh, questions. And our objective, and uh, in, I started from the phrase that we go now to the practical, practical size, because it's not, it's not Sava your kind of fault, or it's mm -hmm. not the fault of, of any of your uh, mm -hmm. team members. It just the, uh, illustrates that uh, real life is much uh, simple from one side, but you have to be very creative to uh, achieve the the targets in uh, in real life. Uh, by meaning that, I won't tell that it is necessary to first to read tasks carefully. Yeah? Secondary is very important to uh, talk very uh, straight to the topic, uh, and that's that's actually my uh, recommendation because I just can easily imagine the. Uh, interview somewhere in a big companies when they're asking you practical particular question what will be your action in case a and b and if you start to talk everything you know on the topic 
I'm afraid that uh, HR manager or your potential boss would ask you to uh, stop it. So sorry for the kind of for the making reality into the into the into the life, <laughs> but sorry, it is it is my it is my experience as well. This so. isn't true. Yeah. So again, uh, let's go to the profession to the, to the question. Uh, Emily, you uh, had some questions. Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you, Alec, for comments. Uh, my question was for the slide, not related, of course, to to chocolate industry as well. But uh, you are listening. You you are list uh, listing the all uh, transportation methods, and uh, I, I, I remarked that there is no pipe transport, and that's a, that that's that there is a methods of transport. Uh, that uh, when when you analyze the old methods, that it, it sh it's existing. You you cannot delist it from from uh, from the old. Uh, but that's 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 only the comment. And uh, uh, you were speaking all uh, you you're speaking sometimes about delivery, sometimes about transportation. Uh, I would like to ask you: Do you know the difference between delivery and transportation? And can be yes. a situation then delivery happening without transportation. And my sec uh, my, my second question, um, so by by mentioning the the supply chain mechanism, uh, and uh, um, the last slide it was the the recommendations about the the capacity. Mm, the question is about uh, have you heard or maybe analyzed the change of ready to delivery to ready to production models for the company by storaging not the finished goods but the raw materials we have heard about this oh, what about uh, the difference between uh, transportation and delivery as i know uh, transportation is more about uh, uh, um, it's more about small items uh, that uh, can be uh, sent quickly and easily uh, and typically through a local service local courier service and delivery is uh, much bigger uh, on the contrary it uh, refers to the transportation of relatively large items like electronics, furniture, uh, and so on. But it's simply. Mm, I wouldn't agree with that, actually. Uh, but if we are limited in time, not just just to open a big, big discussion. So the delivery is the matter of the change in property, right? Uh, for the for the cargo and for the amount. Yes, when you're signing the cargo invoice as a consignee. So you're accepting the, the property right and the responsibility for, for, the, for the concrete specific amount that you have. A transportation is a physical move from the A point to the B point. And uh, if you uh, review the Inca terms that's globally applied, there is the delivery without transportation when you're picking up the product from your supplier's warehouse there is nothing happened, no any move from A to B, but the change of property is happening in the warehouse. Uh, that's a delivery without transportation. That was the, the issue. Uh, and uh, the question about R2D and R2P, um, what you see in, let's say, retail chains like uh, X5 Retail Group, uh, mm -hmm. you see the, the pack of milk on the shelf. Uh, for example, that's just an or the, the the bar of chocolate on the shelf. You see, you can touch it, you can see it physically. It's, it's delivered and transported to uh, to to the shelf. What you see in a zone, you see the picture. You don't see the bar, chocolate bar bar of chocolate inside, and that's the matter. That uh, the question is. Uh, the uh, the principle of keeping uh, the the demand before the production, 
or production before the demand. That was the issue. And what that was the question. Have you analyzed that or not? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, we understand it. That's very good that you understand it. <laughs> 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 With your help, <laughs> we're going to do this. So, in other words, the R two D that's ready to deliver. It's meaning that you keep inventory for finished goods on the specific normatives, trying to predict the demand. And R two P, you are not having the inventory in finished goods form, but you are keeping uh, uh, the the raw materials. Because when you, you when you revert cacao beans to chocolate, I think it's clear that you, if if you're if you're mistaken in specific SKU range, that you have SKU on the stock finished goods, but you're getting orders for the other SKUs that you are not having, you're out of stock and in the same time with overstock, and you cannot revert uh, finished goods of chocolate back to the cacao beans. That that is the point. That unless you get the fixed orders. You are not starting and 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 reverting the raw materials to finished goods. And I was I was thinking that by proposing the capacities, you will comment that this is the change from keeping uh, uh, finished inventory in finished goods to the inventory and in raw materials. That's the principle of that. Um, okay, thank you. So no more comments for for this part. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, actually, there are two ways. We want somehow to summarize uh, the results, and we can do it two ways. Either uh, me and Oleg will uh, switch off and come back in five minutes, and you will have, let's say, a uh, smoking break or, let's say, coffee break. <laughs> and uh, yes, I think it will be, and then we'll, we'll show you uh, the last slide from our side to show uh, how. Actually, what you said is relate is compared to what uh, logistic professionals are talking about the the solving of the current logistic issue, and it will be interesting to see which groups are most precise to the experts' opinion. So, if if you could allow us to leave this conversation for, let's say, now it's time is uh, six minutes past. Let's let's give us five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. Okay. Yeah. In five minutes, we'll be back. It's interesting gap analysis. Yes, between what they did. Well, yes, of course. But we need a little bit of time to summarize then, and then yes, find yes. to, find yes, to yes, start a gap. Very analysis. interesting. Very so interesting. please, uh, so have have another chat, uh, and we will uh, be back uh, shortly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a new thing the experts have come out with. Verdict. Mm -hmm. Gap analysis based on how precisely, how close the how close. teams, mm -hmm. yes, approach the real situation. How the, the solution, because what they, they provided today looks like, like a solution for you case or whatever, or a task, or a si assignment, I don't know. All right. Uh, if, yes. Sometimes this happens if you uh, go through the assessment center, that's for a logistics company or another company, where they would give you practical assignment, and you would have to come up with solution. And then, but uh, the difference is that there, nobody will comment make comment to tell you what you did wrong and this is a rare opportunity the rarest opportunity to get an insight into how those who normally would sit cross from you from the other end of the table or whatever opposite you uh, base their decision all right something like that it's interesting i i expect it would be in graph you know some they will what they will provide us with a graph form. I don't know what can this be, what form of, but it must be, you know, interesting. Waiting. Mm -hmm. 
but you did a good job, I must say, students. Very pleased. Emil, Professor Masrasian, thank you so, so much. Your questions are always to the point and, you know, uh, challenging, but not insulting at the same time. It's perfect. That's why I don't hesitate to uh, invite you again and again to be an arbiter or uh, act as an expert in these events. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your invitation and uh, this opportunity to to touch this session, to uh, to to set a couple of questions, maybe uh, that <laughs> having the answers right now, but to make a further reflection. Mm -hmm. to to get more prepared to the realities. Mm -hmm. These students, probably some of you want to say something while we're waiting. You're, because before the pre-conference stage, we somehow ask students to share their expectations. And what do you feel now? Was it, did what happened exceed the expectations or didn't match or whatever? How did you benefit probably? Mm -hmm. In what ways? And who thinks now that you, I, I'm more than sure that you selected this session uh, not being, a, you know, believers of this uh, goddess logistics is, yes, reigning the world. But now, do you feel, at least some of you, that this might be an interesting field for future occupation or something like that? Or at least exploration, right? What can, well, who can say something? Hmm? Who can say something? Guys, that would be great to hear from you, really. Hmm? Why? Why are you silent? I don't understand. Why are you silent? 26, now at least 20 people. Hmm? Eva, can you say something? Vitalia. Uh, yes, of course. I would like to mention uh, that uh, it was really great experience to also participate in that section because, to my uh, previous knowledge, it was um, I was a little bit even concerned about what can I bring to this, what knowledge can I bring to this section, and, and uh, it was really good also understand that um, things that we see now in the world and uh, also that are happening uh, with all the sanctions and restrictions and how people and in practice deal with it so it was really a great to hear experience uh, not only from experts as Emil and Oleg but also from students uh, and uh, just to understand that we are all on the same same page of dealing with it and that we are able to figure how we should and uh, work with it in the next so really pleased to be in that section and to get all that knowledge anybody from young gentlemen thank you thank you Eva. anybody from young gentlemen i huh? want you to say something hmm? anybody don't you shadly where are they Anybody, any young gentleman waiting for your estimation is what is going on? Hmm? Michael Purt of Mishak, what can you say? Hmm? So I can say that uh, it's a large experience and uh, we all, I think, to bring and to take uh, the vast, vast amount of new information according to logistic change, supply change and uh, logistic principles and uh, mm. for me it was a pleasure to make some kind of conversation and to wake uh, to wake communication with uh, such uh, professionals and experts mm -hmm. so thank you so much so uh, was... not about thank you but about uh is there any you know feeling inside you that you would be considering this branch, this field of economics, so uh, national applied to national or global, probably again one day global economy as logistics, right? Why I'm asking? Because in the end of the session, we will ask our experts 
to uh, mention so they will not tell you at that moment today but they will tell us and then we'll tell you who they uh, saw spotted as the best contributors in terms of critical thinking and whatever because sometimes we have an opportunity to organize a men mentor session yes mentoring session sometimes people there were some uh, surprising outcomes that people joined companies they even would have uh, wouldn't have thought about before and we can say that they're very really advanced but... yes it's right. unapproachable making direct access to people who otherwise are unavailable yeah um uh, any ideas would any of you uh, appreciate such an opportunity hmm? interesting okay let's wait mm -hmm. we are ready with with oleg with some with some uh, results if, if we may share with you but before sharing it i want to express uh, first of all my huge surprise over the level of english english language uh, between all the speakers it's really impressive uh, because uh, well i little bit envy uh, to this young generation because we didn't have such opportunity to speak on a professional topics at this age and i'm grateful to my teachers of, of english uh, back to my early 90s uh, in Perm, where I graduated the University at Applied Mathematics in 1995. But still, uh, I will, I'm really impressed. I'm, because working in the international environment, I would say that every generation speaks better and better English. Um, but uh, I'm sure that uh, if in early 90s, the knowledge of English was uh, critical and the only one necessary component of successful career, our days, it's not just enough because you have to have a lot of other uh, hard and soft skills to be competitive in the market. And so uh, let me share how competitive were the groups have been on today's small session, but it was practical session, which I want to again uh, share with you. Is it visible now, please advise? Visible. Oh, yes. 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 Students versus experts. Perfect. Exactly. So uh, we were talking how many percent mm -hmm. of the experts were talking about certain uh, measures which have to be taken in order to improve or uh, let's say secure supply chain in a uh, volatile. Um, environment so uh, between uh, experts the number one was how you're going to plan to increase resilience mm -hmm. across the supply chain is term resilience is is physical ter terms from physics mm -hmm. does it clear for everyone that meaning that to get extra force uh, and extra power to and extra let's say competitiveness or defensiveness to the supply chain. Mm -hmm. And we are happy that uh, all groups mentioned dual sourcing of raw materials, uh, of actually of, of suppliers. It was said in different way, but this idea was taken by all the groups. Uh, also group B mentioned that despite it's not very popular idea, but uh, you have to increase inventory of the critical products. Otherwise you could stop manufacture so production would be much more expensive rather than store extra inventory. Uh, there was also ideas of near shoring or trying to bring uh, uh, the manufacturer closer to uh, production. Yeah, closer to production or closer to the source of materials. So it's uh, whenever it's possible, it's uh, it's also a great idea. Uh, especially in now in the uh, when you are talking about recycling procedures or uh, reuse procedures or res uh, waste uh, minimization, ecologist uh, topics, it's very important. Well, let me tell you that starting next year, Europe will source 
20% of the of the lithium using the old uh, batteries from old uh, or expired electric cars. So this is a way how to bring uh, materials back to the life. Just one a small example uh, from today's uh, Erbaka <laughs> article. Mm -hmm. So um, what is regionalized supply chain? Again, uh, the nobody, I uh, know, three groups uh, mentioned that you should use uh, more local production or local uh, manufacturers. So, and another question which have been uh, taken in the, the point, uh, to implement uh, technologies, to implement technologies uh, by advanced analytic, uh, but it's not only the, it's only one element uh, of the really improving of supply chain. Because if you can see here that uh, implementing the new uh, mode of the operations of the sales and operation planning cycle, that uh, centralized planning, you try to again express here using the uh, blockchain approach. Uh, but blockchain sounds a little bit kind of sophisticated, but in reality you had, as a, we can guess that your intention was to say something, something similar. But what we really uh, did not uh, mention, this is a deficit of the labors. And what we all do now, uh, well, in, in our real business, that we are reskilling labor force. What that means? We try uh, each of the employee to know two, three uh, nearby uh, profession, if you say so. So even warehouse worker, should work as a, a driver for the forklift, for mm -hmm. example, or can be can use the uh, our scanners and uh, warehouse management system to do the job of the warehouse keeper or uh, record keeper. It gives us extra flexibility and increase the level of the uh, manpower manpower. Uh, Manufacture. Sorry, Prezitnis Truda, who would advise me the right word? Prezitnis Truda is in English. Prezitnis Truda. What's the right word for Prezitnis Truda? I could say effectiveness, okay. Well, yes. Yes. Well, let's increase the, yeah, the output from the, from the labor, the effectiveness of the labor. And Again, the uh, people. Productivity. Productivity. Productivity, of course. Of course, sorry. It's, <laughs> sometimes I really uh, forgot very simple words here. Yeah. So, uh, people management and acquiring talents is really, uh, well, while we are here, actually, yes, to listen to the to new talents uh, and uh, giving you a perspective of how you match with the uh, uh, with the best uh, market experts. So it shows that, let's say, it, some of the groups are at 50% experts, which is, which is great. Some of the group did not really uh, read um, task carefully and kind of did the job at least a little bit, uh, at little bit, let's say, um, lower level, but it's, it's training training and it's natural is that we all study we study from you now and you study from us so uh, and the most important question is to listen to listen to the question and to raise uh, your comments if the question is not clear because if you start answering the question the wrong question or then it really makes a, a bad a bad uh, outcome so acquiring new talents because new generation is growing up you have much more soft skills which we don't have uh, or you have much more it skills which we don't have and that's great that this is an opportunity to make uh, well companies more competitive to bring new talents into them i would say in our company uh, which is just regional my current company is uh, uh, big 
uh, regional distributor and logistic provider with a turnover at approximately 100 million dollars a year so it's not it's let's say not as huge as uh, multinational companies but i would say that from 700 people uh, in in our staff uh, the it department is 20 people and most of them are programmers who helps to automate uh, to make uh, sure. to, to automate to automate uh, most of the process and for example let me give you just a one number uh, our sales representative collecting orders and 99.5% of these orders go straight to the warehouse without human touch to the documents. That means that actually we are, uh, we are competitive uh, compared to other uh, logistic or distributor providers because uh, the number of the mistakes are minimized because uh, human factor is minimized and the cost of such operation is minimized because we are using technologies. And that's actually the, the future for the country because uh, the number of the high skilled professional in Russia is high and it gives uh, a big opportunities for continuous developing of the economy even in such a tough time. So, and uh, if I may ask for applause for the groups A and B, let's make uh, 30 seconds applause because uh, these teams get, did a great job. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is all from, uh, from me and looking forward for your feedbacks. Can I say a couple of words, if you don't mind? Uh, um, first of all, my deep appreciation to the team of experts today, because uh, I believe that the level of uh, this session was uh, very, very uh, high from the professional point of view. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, it was a good job, great job done. And uh, you definitely contributed substantially to the success of its work. And uh, my congratulations and my thanks to the participants, to our students uh, who demonstrated uh, quite a well, uh, quite good abilities today in uh, different spheres. They showed that they are uh, interested, uh, that they are motivated, uh, they are agile. And uh, I believe, uh, well, that public speaking skills, uh, well, there is always room for improvement, but today they showed that they can not only present, they have learned to debate, which is, I think, is a very important soft skill that they have acquired. And uh, um, once again, I think uh, this session has proved uh, that teamwork can do miracles. So I'm personally, I'm quite happy with how it went. And uh, I really hope that um, our, um, well, links with the experts uh, will continue in the future because uh, it, well, worked great, I think. And I wish you all good luck and uh, well, peace to everyone and uh, as to the students some of them are already leaving university this year some probably next year I hope that what you have the experience that you got today uh, and the knowledge acquired uh, the new knowledge and probably even the critical remarks were positive uh, you can build on them and all that taken together um, in my opinion, is sure to contribute to your uh, greater competitiveness in your career path. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Lenica. And if I may, uh, if I may add something, All right. So, what you said in the last part of your of your uh, speech or feedback about that the critical. Um, remarks also were positive. I want to add and send something um, 
to to that that uh, our students they, you you did a great job to them very much impressed and but this was not meant as was said in the very first announcement for this event that it is not meant it's even not a uh, hackathon not a case competition we didn't mean competition we meant learning and uh, the fact that some teams closely approached to the mark and some you know didn't um, uh, was not that you know um, moved so so deep inside the to, to the bottom of the topic doesn't mean anything because having lived the most of my life for example i must say that uh feedbacks assessment don't necessarily have to be all flattering not at all because believe me what i remember from my youth very often I much more remember the critical remarks are remembered longer and they gave you the act as a trigger to future success, to learning, to self-criticism, creative, practical um, self-criticism, -crit uh, working self-criticism. So don't be upset. Once again, it was not meant as contest, as a competition, but as a learning session with very, very friendly experts who neither became friends or whatever. Probably we will have some post-conference events if anybody will express interest to this uh, topic or to other topics. So stay tuned to Student Guider site. You are all winners today, really. You are all winners. See, and this uh, absence of pluses in some of these um, checks of this matrix, yes, or fields of this matrix, shouldn't upset you, but work as a stimulus, you know, stimulus yes, for future research and uh, improving. So doing your best at all times, whatever the task, whether it's... Uh, is um, brings immediate benefits or or not that's it thank you very much anybody else wants to say something students students say something why are you so inactive i want to say thank you for this experience thank you for all participation switch on your natasha switch on your camera please will you Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks, Natasha. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone. It was a really pleasure to share our experience and listen to other participate participants. And um, mm -hmm. as for me, I work with uh, logistic a little bit uh, in my job and uh, I found new ideas today. And I think I will implement it in my uh, real job. Very much. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. My comment is from the part from the students. Uh, as uh, this year is 20 years from my graduation from, uh, uh, from IBS. And uh, uh, we had a course in logistics in uh 1999 or 2000 i can i could be mistaken and it was completely different from what we are talking now and as being a student i was understanding the type of transportations uh, the types of containers so all all these typologies and today we speak more about arrangements technologies integrations and this is 20 years past and it's completely changed uh, the situation and as as uh, uh complying with the with the two sides in inside of me so as a student postgraduates uh i can say that it, it's really changing and and uh, wishing to students to to be very uh on wave on on these all the changes because if you if you think that you you know now everything and there is nothing more 
that would be a complete stop. So you you have to you have to be absolute open to these changes. And um, uh, if if you let me this opportunity, I would like to thank uh, Yelena Nikolaevna personally for heading uh, the session and 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 giving these um, all opportunities to to us and students to uh, to continue a good tradition uh, once in a year somewhere in April to meet and discuss the current and edge on topics. So thank you very much for that. That was that was very and really uh, a good session. And I would say it's very good that we are all uh, in uh, in the topic. We are all alive and in the topic, yeah. Thank you, Emil. I'm more on the organizing part to be precise. Uh, and uh, well, it is uh, Irina Osifovna definitely who is the brain of all those events. Uh, so special thanks to you, Irina. Thank you, and all Muted. team, Lisa Alenikel coordinating everything, because every little also, matter, every little, you know, fault, it comes as, you know, aggravated uh, somehow. So we try to avoid them, but excuse us if something, um, you know, well, it is what goes wrong, but we immediately try to you know, to fix it all. And we will be very happy to continue this because we think it is, we believe that it is, um, I don't know, I will not say it is better, not better. It is a wonderful addition to the regular classes. Will you agree? Will you agree? Yes. I'm, I'm a little bit upset that you are not coming with the feedbacks now, but uh, I don't want to don't want to pressurize to pressurize you in this uh, respect. We will ask you to write your oh, not expectations, but post what? What would we call it? You know, on the post, you know, references after the event. Yes, each in your telegram or we may even make videos if you wish. Okay, so we will think we'll ask our experts to then tell us who impressed them most, and you will probably get some, also some small, small, I don't know, gifts, I don't know what. Somehow we'll mention you. Okay, thank you very much for being us together. Other, it's remarkable that other friends and acquaintances of mine, also faculty. Faculty means professors and teachers of high school, high educational institutions. This Sunday, I'm meeting with their students on different reasons. Yes, yes, it's a good tradition. It's good. It's really, it, it, it gives hope. It gives hope. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.